my name's Rich Wilson and today I brought you to Cow Gap Farm Fisheries at Stannington. It's just top side of Sheffield, we're literally on top of World here, bang on top of Hill, super local, we've come for a little short session, we're hoping we can catch some fish, it's been minus three, it's been absolutely bitterly cold, foot of snow on ground last week, it's rained for two days solid, rivers are all in flood, little short session, see how we go. We don't know how hard this is going to be today, so we're going to set off fishing for anything, just on maggot. I'm going to use a tiny little pot, maybe introduce 10 maggots at start. I think this could be operation try and catch a fish first because I'm absolutely freezing. So we're just going to go out, we've plumbed up, we've plumbed up absolutely bang dead depth. We're going to just pot six or seven maggots in see if we can catch a fish ideally this will go underway in seconds like that well that is the blank avoided we'll take that straight away we're just going to keep doing this because we can't take out what we put in we just introduce little amounts of feed we can ease his way into the session and see how the fish are feeding, how they want the bait, whether they want trickled in, um, fed and left alone. We don't really know. I'm happy that I've caught a fish first chuck. It's always a good sign. We've come to the end of the lake where it's calmest. There's quite gusty winds today. Oh, and there's another fish there. Quite gusty winds today, so we've tucked ourselves for a little pleasure session in a little, little calm corner. Roach number two, that'll do me. It's a cracking little fishery, this. Uh, I grew up fishing venues around here. Like, there's Dan Flask. It's about um, a mile down the road. Grew up fishing venues like that when I was young. Didn't used to have these sort of venues. Used to fish Dan Flask, it used to be really hard. I wish they had these sort of venues when I were a kid. You'd have caught a lot more fish. If we went on Dan Flask today, we wouldn't catch a, would not catch a fish. Like we said, we didn't know what we were going to catch today. This this is a full mixed course fishery. There's carp, bream, tench, a lot, a lot of silvers. What's this? Could be a roach, or is it an hybrid? Oh, a big roach. Well, we definitely didn't expect it to be like this. Like I say, I used to do my fishing at Dan Flask, and it didn't really used to be commercials then. And then I met... A very very good friend Alex Mitchell we started fishing everywhere together and we used to go to Kivert and all and this sort of fishing is out what we did in winter little approach catch anything that's with look at the size of that for a roach that is unbelievable it's quite relevant now there is a few fish feeding um, silvers so far and because there is I'm gonna now to start to introduce a little bit of bait by hand I'm gonna open a caster line up Five, six sections, uh, five, six metres down edge there. Because I know they're feeding some, some fish, I can introduce a little bit of bait. It's virtually a throwaway line, that. I can just keep flicking a few casters, and if the bigger fish get their head down, I'll catch them quicker and better at that. I'm still going to carry on fishing further out. I've, I'm just fishing a little 4 by 12 strung out rig, with number 10s, 20 up, 09 bottom, I'm putting six or seven maggots in. One of the, with the wind, one of the most important things today is I've got two number eights back shot. About six inch away from flow. It's allowing me to lower it in and hold the float against the back shot rather than letting the wind swirl. And pull my line everywhere. I can just watch the rig down. Sometimes it's not getting to the bottom it's holding up and with the back shot it's allowing me to see it hold up rather than the wind holding it up with the line. I'm going to keep feeding that caster line now, get quite a few bites so I'll happily keep putting quite a bit of bait in there. 
it's not going to hurt anything. If all the thing, it's just going to, the longer I can leave that, it'll get better. I'm just going to keep putting bait in. Let's see how it goes. I'm nothing saying these fish are going to feed all day. We just make most of it while we can. We might have to have um, caught one shipping out then. <laughs> you know when you look in, that happens. I started my angling journey fishing, fishing holidays with my dad. And my dad soon realised that he was no matchman, he was just a little pleasure angler. And I craved for a lot more than just catching fish. So he made a few phone calls and he come to tell me, he goes, oh, you've got a, um, a trial for Sheffield Juniors. It's on Sheffield Canal one Tuesday night. And I went down, little seven, eight year old lad, trying to carry me tackle, which I couldn't manage. And we went on canal and I caught a few fish. And it, it really took off from there. They used to have a national team and a couple of years later, managed to get picked for this national team. Tony Hall used to run it. God rest his soul, he's passed away now, but he used to run it in conjunction with Andy Kinder. And that's where I first met Andy. And Andy Tretters, he treaters like adults. He was part of Barnes herself and he treat us as if we were proper adult fishermen. If we did something wrong, he told us. If we weren't using it right gear, he told us. And he had a group of lads there who listened to him, did exactly what he said. And two years later, we went on to absolutely paralyse two nationals on trot. Brilliant memories. Fish with a load of lads. And I still know them now. There's quite a few still on circuit. Got some absolutely best memories ever of that sort of time. It's, that's what got me the bug. And when I got to about 12 year old, a man called Graham Collins were running Firth Park angling. And he phoned me up and he asked me if I wanted to join their um, adult team. I'd, all, I'd done a little bit of adult fishing. A man called Roger Pryor used to let me fish their winter league on Trent and with them. And we won that and it was really competitive. I can remember winning a 250 pound voucher for Calcox. I went and bought a new range of stick float rods. And Graham Collins took me under his wing and he let me fish at top level. 13 year old, I was fishing division one national. It were, I were in awe because I was probably one of the youngest people, person fishing it. But because Graham gave me the chance, he had faith in me. He, um, he got me on to be put forward for England trials. And then as my match fishing progressed, he actively, he actively encouraged me to go and join bigger and better setups, which I did. That's when I went off and really, really concentrated on the open match circuit then. I used to fish the cameras and matches as much as I could. That was what you used to aim at. Getting 20 to 30 points, getting in final, which I did a few times. You used to get your hat, wear it with pride. There were a lot of big matches in them days. Nowadays, 60 peg is quite a big match. You used to fish two and 300 peg matches on Witham and Trent all the time. It's just how fishing's evolved, I feel. From then, I went on to join Legion with Alex. Alex went off and joined Barnsley. I joined Trentman for six or seven years. I then got a phone call. I can always remember the time I got the phone call, my Barnsley call up. Phone call went sort of, this is the one and only time you're gonna get asked to fish for Barnsley. We don't beg, we don't ask again. What's your decision? Well. Absolutely, no brainer, a joint next day. And I think it were every kid's dream to fish for Barnsley. And luckily enough, I got to fish with them all. And the amount I learned, unbelievable. Just net this one then. My fishing progressed. I had a little bit of break from fishing. I had um, 
some kids came along, wonderful. Um, I, I devoted my life to them for a few years. And since the last four or five years I've come back to fishing, there's been a massive revelation in feeder fishing, which I've embraced. Uh, I joined New Fish, I joined the New Fish North team with Wayne, um, Steve, George and Rich Vaughan. I learn it ever. We learn a lot. We all bounce off each other. We're never off phone. We're never off messenger. And it's amazing just having the right mentality and the right anglers around you, sharing knowledge, how much you learn. It it really reminds me of being back in Barnsley team. There was nothing that nobody did that we didn't share. We were just good set of lads that's what you've got to do good set of friends around you and you, you it makes your angling a lot better there's a lot of fish here now i'm getting bites on drop got a little strung out rig bottom foot and half but they're now starting to really hold it up like i say i've come a few times with my son we only have an hour and a half tops before he gets bored he just fishes a top kit and two inch summer top kit and one catches some nice fish um, we're never really here long enough to see what the venue's capable of. I'm quite impressed so far. become apparent now there's quite a few fish feeding and instead of shipping out there long and catching them I've opened this line up caster line it's five meters out just gone on it now I'm hoping I'll be able to start catching here it'll speed my fishing at this but oh it's no bigger fish but we're about first choke I'm hoping that by coming in shorter just speeds me fishing up just makes it a lot easier just I'm just enables me to get the most out of my peg I can throw by hand I don't need my pot anymore so I'm fishing caster now just gone a little bit over depth put a little bit bigger hook on I'm just holding on to my floaters caster drops through water That's another fish there I've been feeding this line for a couple of hours now just gives them that confidence when you come short to maybe stay feeding on it for a lot longer. Just fishing single caster on hook. Half a dozen casters round float each. The closer you can bring your fish in, as long as you're getting as many fish and as many bites, the quicker you, you could build a weight. Take the most out of your peg, get through as many fish as you can. Now that one's just held it up as it's gone down. That must have took it at half depth, that. And it shows that them casters have been dropping through water all that time. They're really confident. A little hybrid, that. This rig I'm using. Top end I've got. The four to six elastic, super soft, it'll stretch for ages. It eliminates a lot of bumps. 040 main line, little shot to trim my float. Sprung, strung out, number 10's bolt, seven number 10's there. I've got a little, I've got now got a 0.10, 
hook length on. And I've got an 18 hook at the minute, but I could easily get away with a 16. At the minute, I'm just hooking caster as you would a maggot. I don't even have to hide the hook. Especially with some fish taking it on drop, that's a bit better way to hook it than burying your hook in. I'm not waiting for a bite. There's a lot of fish in this place feeding. It surprised me today. I didn't know if we'd get a bite or not. I definitely didn't think we'd be catching, chucking underarm and fishing casters. Just for my session today, bait, bait wise simple. I brought a pint of casters, a pint of maggots, what I had in the fridge. I have brought a little bit of sweet corn in case we needed to. That one gave me a lift bite. They're definitely attacking these casters. Bit of sweet corn in case we had to have a chuck around. We didn't know what we were going to catch or how many we were going to catch. But just for a little short winter session, we're catching really one a chuck now. I've got this four to six set as light as I can. I put it in my uh, kit and I maybe took two inch off. I just find that's absolutely perfect. I can really strike into the bites confidently like that. It sets the hook, but it's got the real forgivingness to allow the fish to not have its own way, but definitely I'm not having to pull their heads off. They're the sort of cast of fish we expected to catch there. Got to be six or eight ounce roach. You can really have a lovely pleasure day when you're catching them sort of fish. When I talked about opening this line up here, throwing a few casters, it, we knew some fish were feeding, so it doesn't matter. Feeding some extra bait didn't mind. It's now relevant, there's a lot of fish feeding. And to maximise the day and become super efficient, the closer you can catch these fish and keep them confident, keep them coming, as long as your catch rate doesn't slow, the better. I'm catching proper dumpy, really chunky roach now on caster. I'm nicking the caster, I'm not even having to bury the hook, hide the hook. I am absolutely just nicking it. They, I'm holding on to it, a lot of them are taking it on drop. By just trickling in four or five casters, every chuck, I'm keeping super efficient. And I feel by doing it this way, I'm catching the most out of my peg I physically can. I think I've come to an happy medium that this top kit plus two is just the area where they most happily feed without becoming super spooky. I'm going in, feed, let my rig settle, catch a fish, and just repeating it time and time again. If it got to a point where I were missing bites, um, having to wait a lot longer you could have come a section too short and you might just have to start trickling your casters in a bit further i've fed it for long enough though and they've just settled there and they're happy super happy to feed there little bite on drop there as it were going down like i said i'm just fishing that bit over depth and it just allows the fish to take that bite a bit more confident and when you strike, they've had it properly, oh, knitting. Just got to get in a little rhythm, a little routine. Up your caster. Ship out as you lay it in. Pick four or five casters up around float. And just watch your float as it goes down. I'm just holding it off them two back shots. So I'm over depth to just let my bite develop. Let the fish take it like that. Confident strike and another fish. The 
there's little things you can do, even though this is a pleasure session. Little little things like having your tray positioned at the right height. My hand goes in my casters, I don't need to look, I can feed. I could concentrate on my float, watch, read my float, read my bites. I'm not looking down, my hand's there, it's into my bait. And then I'll just watch, I can watch my bite develop. I had a little bite on drop then, just waiting for it to go. So I hook a fish. My landing net's positioned in a way that I don't have to look where it were. It's just there positioned. Net my fish. And I know my keep net positioned just outside my left hand. Fish straight in. I don't really have to look. It comes second nature. Straight in my casters. Hook one. Ship out. Lay in. Don't need to look. Just handing casters. Feed. Watching me flow all the time, deciding when to strike. Ideally, I want to come back with a fish every chuck. I know it's a pleasure session, but that's the match angler coming out in me. The peg's changing now, there's signs. Fish are moving in and around the peg as I feed. I'm using this four to six elastic, and I know it's super soft on the strike, I could catch a two ounce fish, but I never know what size fish is going to be next. Even though it's so cold today, I brought some corn with me because we didn't know what we were going to catch, if we were going to catch anything. And um, some of these roach are that big, I started to drop odd little piece of corn on and I'm going to have a go now. It's absolutely freezing. Let's see if we can catch a fish on a piece of corn. It's absolutely mad. Just on the same rig, just as a little summit to try. Sometimes you can find a massive bonus fish just by doing that. Oh, it's only an odd piece of corn I'm putting in. Something you could sometimes do, there could be a big fish sat there and it just can't get quick enough to get to your casters with the amount of fish in your swim. Sometimes you're not gonna get a bite on it, but it's worth just having a minute on it. Might tell you that some big, big fish sat there. It's amazing you can write off some of these lakes that you wouldn't normally go to. And you'd be surprised. There's nobody else on the lake today. It's, I know why, it's because it's absolutely freezing. Um, we're lucky that it's a pleasure lake, this. They don't normally allow nets, but just for filming wise, they've allowed us to put a keep net in, put a few silvers in, just so we can have a look at potential at venue. A little bite there, it's going to go on corn this. And there we have it, one on corn. <laughs> it's no bigger, but when we drove up this morning, minus three, I did not think for one minute we'd be hooking corn on today to catch a fish. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> I've been fishing and shipping five, six metres. Light levels are dropping a little bit now. I'm going to re-plumb up on a top kit and just see if they will come super close. I've got nothing to lose. It's a pleasure session. Last little bit of day, so I'm using a plummet with a large diameter base. I'm just going to lower it in and it settles on top of silt. Just tells me it is way shallower there. So just so as I'm fishing accurately, we're not wasting any time. We're gonna get it right before we start fishing it. Just lower it in. We're just fishing on a little slope there, so that's perfect. So if we just swing it out, it'll swing back onto a slope. We'll throw a few casters in. We might catch one, might not. It'll just tell me for my own interest how close they would have come if we can get a bite. Oh, straight away. And it's a better fish.
just goes to show the little bits or areas of your peg you've you forgot about all day and you think there won't be a fish laid there I'm just showing my plummet were on 15 seconds ago and now I've just caught unbelievable size roach not one bit today did I think I'd be catching them roach and I didn't think I'd be catching them on a top kit down edge first drop when you're doing this sometimes I could feed smaller fish and I haven't, I haven't been feeding anything there today I've only just started feeding on it so perhaps them bigger fish just wanted to sit there because it's somewhere safe so sometimes you could stop feeding and catch bigger fish I know it sounds daft but the bait could attract the smaller fish so I'm just gonna have a few chucks now by not feeding just see what happens because I'm getting bites on drop now and ideally I want them to be on the bottom where they're taking it. There's a few fish there. <laughs> By just letting that bite develop then, that fish might have had a little go at it on drop. By just leaving it that few seconds, making sure before I struck into it, lets you come back with a fish every chuck. I'm going to go back in and not feed again. By not feeding that settled properly this time. Straight away. I am fed again. I feel that them fish just want to sit there naturally. And by feeding, all I'm doing is attracting smaller fish and maybe bringing them up in water. Confident the elastic's doing its work and controlling the fish as and when I need to, but letting them soft enough to run when they want to and strike as hard as I want. I'm just going to fish this line out for the last few minutes and then, like we said, we're only having a short session. Let's have a little look what we've caught and what you could catch. Mm -hmm.